Hey guys, Ivan here, and we have an update of William Bonek, three weeks out of Arnold Classic, and this one was really impressive. Now, I watched Nick Strength and Power's video about this, and he actually said that he has somebody else winning the Arnold Classic, and of course, everybody is entitled to their opinion, but I was honestly surprised to hear this, because when I saw this video of Bonek, I thought, okay, this is, this is it, this is, this is it, it's done, I mean, he, he already won in my eyes. I mean, just take a look at his back double bicep, probably the most important pose. And not just this one, the others you're gonna see in a moment are also really freaking impressive, but this one I was really amazed by. Who in that lineup at the Arnold Classic has this kind of thickness, this kind of development, this maturity that will actually uh, showcase itself the best when he's, you know, completely shredded and once he peaks for the show, yeah, this is about how many? Two, two and a half weeks out? Not really three weeks out, more like two, two and a half. So there's that, that's a long time. That's a long time for a bodybuilder of, of his stature, of his standard. Uh, he can do a lot of change in that in that time, but he's already pretty much shredded. It's just a little water on the glutes and on the lower back. He will be peeled. Now, in my prediction video, I had him winning, but I was like, anybody else can win because I wasn't sure if he digressed more. In the past couple of years, two years maybe, his physique wasn't necessarily getting better, he was sort of fading, but looking at this now, now I know that that offseason, not competing uh, in spring, taking some time off of everything, now working with a good coach, Abdullah, yeah, it's paying off. It's working. It's working out very nicely for Bonac, and I do have him easily winning this Arnold Classic. There are certain things about his physique that I didn't really like. I'm gonna show that to you in a moment, but still, look at this. Who has this kind of development and maturity and everything? No, nobody. Nobody, really. Who is this big, this round? Again, I said this before. Bonac is the first tier bodybuilder. Everybody else competing over there is second tier. If somebody else beats him, they will kind of become the first tier bodybuilder and Bonek might drop down to that second tier, but with him looking like this, he ain't going anywhere. He is going to remain a top tier bodybuilder and here you can see a little bit more clearly, the lighting is a little bit better. So you can see that he looks mature, he looks big, he looks round, I mean everything, he's just put on. He's just, he's better than he was last year. If he is better, how can he lose? The one thing that is drawing my eyes a lot is the gyno. I don't know how this happened. I would expect a guy on his level had a surgery a long time ago. Most guys do, but apparently he didn't. And it flared up for some reason now. I'm hoping it is prolactin induced gyno. I hope it's not from estrogen. Because if it is just lactation, you can get rid of it in, you know, in a couple of weeks before the Arnold, yeah. But if it is just uh, glandular uh, tissue growth, then yeah, it's not going to happen. He's going to have that guy on the stage. But I think it's not big enough to hurt his placing. I don't think so. Look at his most muscular, also really impressive. And just the overall size of the guy, the thickness, the details. Even at this point, he's not even competing. This is just guest posing and he looks absolutely amazing. So once again, I was really surprised to hear Nick Strength and Power say that he doesn't believe William Bonek is going to win. I'm curious what he was thinking in that video. He didn't say who he thinks is going to win. I'm guessing maybe he thinks Nick Walker, but I don't think Nick Walker is on this level. Not yet. Not yet. In a couple of years, maybe. But right now, I think William Bonek is going to absolutely crush everybody else and just annihilate the, the entire lineup and win this show with, with ease, honestly. If you guys know who Nick was inferring that is going to win the Arnold Classic, you tell me in the comment section. Maybe he was thinking Sergio Oliva? I don't think so. Look, this physique update, I had to make a video about it because it looks damn impressive. It looks really good. I mean, he looks huge. He looks so big and so round. And just considering his height, it's going to be amazing seeing him on that stage. He's going to dwarf some people. He is going to make some people look small standing next to him, including Bonek. But does it really matter that much? It's all about the proportions, man. I mean, this is. Uh, bodybuilding is an illusion. Of course, if you're like five foot, then you cannot really beat a guy who is 15 inches taller. Yeah, but if it is like five inches difference, 
it won't really matter that much. Apparently, as I just checked, uh, Sergio is 5'10 and uh, William Bonac is 5'7. So that's a big difference. That's three inches. That's like uh, seven and a half centimeters. So th that's not little, but it's not that much. I mean, Sergio is not facing uh, Sean Clarida or somebody like that. So it's going to be hard for Sergio with, with, his, uh, with his height to actually look big and full standing next to somebody who is called a pit bull, you know, William Bonek. Maybe Bonek got that nickname because of the temper, but no, no, I remember Louis Marco called him that because he has so much muscle on such a small frame. So to, to, to beat somebody like Bonek, he would have to be like 350 on stage. And uh, Sergio was 280, 285 last year, which is insanely big, but it still, it still wasn't enough, you know, to be that muscular. So Sergio right here, I think he looks bigger. I think he's going to be maybe 290, which is incredible, which is about a, the, the size of Steve Kuklo, for example. But is it going to be enough to beat Bonek? No, no, I don't think so. Not, not to, not, maybe to beat him. It's not all about the size. Maybe he outconditions him or something like that. But uh, to outmuscle him, that ain't happening. No, no, the height and all the mass, all the weight... It's not going to be enough because Bonek, he's just he's just built different. He's packed. He has so much roundness in 3D. And Sergio improved in that region quite a bit. But I don't know. We still have to wait to see them on stage. Maybe Sergio improved that much to actually outmuscle Bonek. But yeah, I think the most muscular award goes to him. To him or maybe Nick Walker even. But I think Nick has a couple of flaws and structural weak points. So yeah, I still have Bonac winning. But Sergio, he might jump a few places. He might even beat Steve Kuklo and, and, and Ian Wallier. It's going to be an interesting lineup. It's going to be an interesting Arnold Classic. I made a prediction, but I said anything is possible. Really, anything is possible. You can't really make a prediction with certainty at this point for this show. No, no, it's going to be a, a wild show. Tell you that much. In case you were wondering which show is Nathan Diasha going to do next, it's going to be Arnold Classic UK. So I thought he won't do it, because if you go to UK, supposedly you can't travel to US. So I don't know what his plan is. Is there enough time for him to travel out of UK and be somewhere else for two weeks and then go to UK? Uh, then, then go to US, sorry, to do the Mr. Olympia? I don't know. I don't know what his plan is, but he says here that he's doing the Arnold Classic UK and... Winning it, of course. I mean, who else can challenge him? Samson Dauda? No, no. Nathan Diasha, you guys might forgot, but this guy was top 7 at the Mr. Olympia when the lineup was really deep, you know. Yeah, this was 2017 and the, the game is just different now. We have a lot of new bodybuilders. The old ones are not there anymore. For example, Phil Heath, not in the game anymore. Uh, Big Ramy, current Mr. Olympia. William Bonac, he's here. Dexter, retired. Sean Rodden, not going to be competing. Rolly Winkler, uh, he's not going to be able to beat Nathan. I don't think so. Uh, Nathan was able to beat Brandon Curry, but I think Brandon is uh, way ahead of him right now. He made so much progress. Cedric, he was actually 10th uh, to this show, but he's not going to be competing again because of the injury. And you have some other new heavy hitters, like Ian Wallier, like potentially Steve Kukla if he qualifies... So we have a different lineup, but at this lineup that was really tough, Nathan was 7th. So I think uh, guys are underestimating Nathan. I think he is a better bodybuilder than Ian Wallier. Even though I'm a huge fan of Ian, I think Nathan just is, he has better structure. Yeah, his uh, torso is very long, especially in the, in the front double bicep. But that's the only flaw basically that I can see. And I think, and I think he improved a lot this year. He gained a lot of muscle. I mean... I don't know if he gained muscle or just fixed his fullness. No, he has a good a game plan. He doesn't need to go with some crisp conditioning because he can get uh, dry very easily. As you can see right here, he is shredded. The glutes are in. This is the conditioning that he wants, that he needs. Just bring the fullness. And seeing him last at the last show that he won uh, against, uh, against uh, Rolly Winkler, you know, that Spain pro... Yeah, he, he's going to do some serious damage to Mr. Olympia. I don't know where he will place. I'll make a prediction video. I'll think about it a little bit more. But I think this guy is going to be a surprise. Because people kind of forgot about him. He didn't do the Mr. Olympia for a couple of years. But he's a great bodybuilder, guys. Don't forget about Nathan Tiesha. All right, let's move on to the next open bodybuilder. Just joking, of course. This is Mr. Classic Physique, Robert Timms 
who looks incredibly big right now. At least that arm does, and the chest. The legs, though, no, not really, not, not so much. And also he's missing a bubble gut for the open. <laughs> Just joking, there, are, there aren't that many bubble guts in the open right now. We kind of fixed that problem, right? Anyways, his arm here looks ridiculous, and overall, I mean, not just the size of it, but like the density, the, the maturity, the hardness, the fullness, the roundness, it just looks really freaking freaky. And it's interesting here that uh, Regan Grimes commented on, on the post, and uh, this was his response. Bro, I know it's gonna be an uphill battle, Chris is a legit monster. So, I don't know, should we consider this confidence or arrogance? Because yes, he won a pro show, but he, I mean, last year the Mr. Olympia, he wasn't even close to Chris. And now he expects to battle him, to be in the top two. I mean, yeah, a lot of people actually have him in the top two. A lot of people actually have him beating Chris. Uh, Ian Valier, the coach and the brother-in-law of Chris also has this guy in the top two. I think he's far better than everybody else in the classic physique. So I guess he, he does have the right to say stuff like this. But uh, is that really gonna be a ba battle? In in my eyes, guys, I don't I don't see him cre challenging Chris. Really, I don't I don't see that. Uh, does he look super freaky and impressive and big? Yeah, but take a look at this. Brion Ainsley, right now. Yes, he's already ready for the show. I mean, I don't know why this guy gets uh, gets shredded so fast. Every year he does this. He's ready five weeks out. Uh, I don't know. I mean. He also looks incredibly big, I mean, the arms and the conditioning, the fullness, the roundness, everything. Right now, he looks more impressive than Chris, if you talk about, you know, the, the muscularity, the density, the hardness, the fullness, stuff like that, the roundness, yeah. But on the stage, it's all about the structure, really. I mean, it's mainly about the structure, and Brian, he doesn't really have that kind of structure that Chris does. I do find him pretty classic, but not on Chris's level. And also, Chris has a large, really big, really big uh, legs, so an overall large frame, because he's much taller, and that's why he's going to, like, dwarf Brian. Even though he has a lot of dense muscle, he's just, you know, shorter, and classic physique has that weight cap based on the height. So, the, the, the taller you are, the more impressive you're going to look in classic physique, and that's why taller guys are going to dominate the stage, for sure. And Robert Timms is quite tall. So for that reason, he might actually beat Brion Ains, even though Brion is impressive right now. And here is the, here's the lineup from last year. So, yeah, I, I find Brion very classic, very, very aesthetic. And it's not his fault that Chris is basically perfect classic physique. Because, I don't know, I mean, you look at Brion and you, you, you go, wow, wow, this is really classic. You know, especially if you take a look at the other shows, you know, the top pro shows, the amateur shows. I mean, Brion has a really, really exceptional classic physique. But then you take a look at Chris, and, and it just fades. So, Chris is just a different animal, man. I mean, I don't care how big Robert Timms is, how muscular, how dense, how shredded he is, or whoever. I mean, Brion, Terrence, whoever. These guys can't really challenge Chris, in my opinion. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Whatever you think about Bonek. Do you really think Bonek can lose the Arnold Classic? If that's your take, tell me in the comment section down below, or whatever your opinion is on whichever part of this video, please comment, tell me, and uh, like this video if you enjoyed it, and thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.